All right, Donkey Kong, take it away. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, or lady and gentlemen, hello, my name is Kevin Playa, and I will be presenting uh, the article of Simon A. Bretschenshaw Dunn, article of the Essential Management Toolbox, Tools, Models, and Notes for Managing Consultants. All organizations are destined to either to perish through business failure from, the, from being left behind by the comp competitions or to be accepted that undertaking changes is a natural part of business life in order to keep in line with customers' requirements. Business is always going to change no matter what. We, 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 we can't deny it. People's going to change what they want. Like, for example, the phones. People have those flip phones, the hard phones that won't break, but now we're here with the five phones or touch and stuff like that, smartphones. People want them now. People used to like all those hard phones, but now this is all this. There's also a lot of reasons for organizations or company needs to change. The rivals of companies are going to be, it's going to be increase the gap between each other and they're going to have to change something that could beat them or at least get to them where they're at right now. And here's a phase phase one for organization pre-positioning. The first phase focused on the preparation for change through communication with staff and, and stakeholders. Talk to the people in the company, talk to the people who has your shares in your companies because without the communication, there's just gonna be chaos because no one knows what's gonna happen. People are gonna think, oh, they're gonna go bankrupt, oh, they're gonna change this or that. People won't know until people, the high ups tell you, tell you what's gonna happen. Phase two, change management plans and implementation. This phase concentrates on the implementation of the change in accordance with the, with the agreed plans and the business objectives. Phase two is the process of planning. Kevin, is that the Spanish version of implementation? Implementation? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you got that little hyphen or the accent mark on it. Wait, does it? It does. <laughs> Oh, God. Implementation. Ignore that. <laughs> Ignore that. <laughs> what was that phase two? Yeah, phase two. <laughs> Fase two. Dos. No. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, the plan that the company made, um, people know what's going to happen, and from there, they can take effect for like, doing the, what's it called, first step, right? Uh, what was it? Repositioning? Yeah, first position. Phase three, ongoing support and consolidation phase. Here the, fo here the focus will be continuation of support and improvements as the changes become available within the coordination and regarded as, you, as the way to do business. This phase of part to be successful within the transforming company is in it's to help the employees know what's their role and what's, what's, what's going to be effective to them and what will be due to affect the company if it's going to be good or bad. Hopefully good. I bet it's working now if you want to try and use it. Yeah, okay. For that phase. Oh. I'm going to push that right, right arrow. No? Right. Ah, I don't need the clicker. Okay, we go to the next slide. During changes and whatnot, there's gonna be resistance no matter what. People don't like change, but it's gonna have to change to get to the future or what's now and present. To understand and best way to address it is brief meetings with the company, company or whatever staff, just to get that information going. There's also a chance uh, if if there is no um, communication, I mean, I'm oh, sorry, um, is to get people to feel that they're involved in the company with the meetings, like get their own what's it called opinion out to, to the manager or people. 
because don't they feel like they are doing something to the business? There's also strategies to um, help um, that uh, one of my classmates, Mr. Tuck, that was had those strategies in his presentation. I'm just gonna repeat them that I have right here. Director strategies here is the management can use this authority to impose the changes required and be able to carry them out speedily. Expert strategy, this approach is usually applied when a technical problem requires solving, such as the introduction of a new IT system. Negotiating strategy, this approach involves a willingness to negotiate with the individual and teams affected by the change and to accept that adjustments and concession may have to be made. Educator strategy, this approach involves change, changing people's values and beliefs so that they support the change and are committed to, to a shared set of organization values. And all the six approaches dealing with resistance. Education, communication, if people have little information, they will assume the worst. Participation, consult consultation meetings and working and working best can be used to invite workers on draft proposals. Facultation, support, listen to people to understand the reasons for resistance. Negotiation can be used for both formally and informally when someone will clearly lose out and they have the part to resist. Manipulation, this approach is often used by people unwittingly. If people, if managers or bosses use this, if they use it, their, their employees are not gonna trust you in the next time they ask you for, do, for you to do something. Conservation and use of authority, this is not the best approach as it may lead to people feel rejected and worthless. One of the things, Kevin, I think you skipped over, not that it's bad, but I thought that was good in this article was the four arrows. Do you remember that one from the four change options for individuals? Oh yeah, I was trying to get that graph or the- No, no, it's okay. I was just, I just want to bring it up because there's this resistance. And I just want to make sure we talk about it. And the author talks about whenever we're placed in any situation, the reactions come from individuals. Now it might be a whole company of individuals making those decisions, but we have four directions or four change options. We can either change ourselves, we can do nothing, we can leave the situation, or we can change the situation. So those are the four choices that we have. And sometimes when we change the situation or leave the situation, we might be using manipulation, we might be using coercion. Those are like tactics that might be used. So I just wanna make sure that we clarify, um, this is great what you're doing so far, but it is made up of individual decision making in, a, in an organization. So you literally have to win the hearts and minds of everybody when you're doing a change or use one of these tactics to overcome resistance. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry, you're doing really well. Cool. Uh, what was it? Mitigation. Oh, and for conversation or use of authority, it's only good for it if there's going to be a deadline that gets to be <clears throat> Like, let's say tomorrow, the deadline to turn in your paper or stuff like that, that's going to be good use, but well, not really good one. Oh, for that, um, errors in coping with ch change or conflict, not enough urgency, like people are like not, like full on support of the change, not carrying a part of guiding vision or lack of vision. Do you mind if we talk about something we were talking about on Thursday right now? Yeah. With what you were talking about? Um, what we were talking about Blockbuster. I think Andrew was like, who's Blockbuster? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we were talking about Blockbuster and I think that there was a lot of this resistance going on with Blockbuster. What what was the, the thought, do you think, in Blockbuster? What do you think they thought was going to happen when Netflix came out, Redbox came out? Probably thought it was just another way to bed. Just another video store? Yeah, they're just because they've been such a staple. Okay. Like, who's gonna rent these spots that have been here forever? Yeah. They've been well for like how are they gonna be? Like who's gonna be? 
What are you thinking, Andrea? What were you, like 12? I don't think they saw it as a threat to begin with. Okay. Because it was just like a isolated thing. Like, they didn't see it as like a. Either Netflix, Redbox, whatever. Because, like, sometimes people don't have access to the internet. So I think maybe they thought that no one was going to really bother to go into technology. Or because I know that my parents don't really know a lot about technology. So they probably thought that there was a lot of people left who didn't use technology. Okay. I think it has to do with that. What do you think about Redbox not really using? Because you can, you don't have to rent on your iPhone. Like I rent on Redbox on my iPhone, they go pick it up, and you can just go push a button, and it's all there. It's pretty dummy proof. Yeah. What do you think about their resistance to change in their model? Plus, Blockbuster got caught me by like, oh, these people or these numbers are like not going to be like able to reach where I'm at because they're down here. But they didn't notice that people are like like to use um, Netflix and Redbox or TV Club or whatever was it. They thought they were going to be timing, so people were noticing the numbers are increasing until they didn't even like, think about change or notice until they were, they were at the bottom. They it was too bottom. late, right? Yeah. Like, I'm sure that they're smart people at Blockbuster, and I'm sure that they were thinking, we got this. You know, we're in a position yeah. of power. Um, but, but by the time they woke up and realized, oh no, the curve is starting to go down with sales, that's almost, a, it's too late at that point to correct. So just interestingly, because we all know how much I love Apple, but I was just talking to somebody else the other day that wasn't me proposing it, but they were telling me they think that Microsoft is essentially a, a dead company walking. And I thought about that. I don't necessarily agree with it, but because they have missed on mobile so hard and they've tried to come back around, but did they miss that window of opportunity to make sure that they didn't get out of the game? Because Windows uh, Mobile is, you know, just a tiny, tiny fraction of the market. You pretty much have iOS and Android at this point. And in five years, are people even going to be using laptops? Or are they going to be using tablets? Things that don't operate with Microsoft. Yes. I actually didn't know Windows had a Windows Phone. Yeah. So Andrea's a perfect example. She didn't know Windows had a Windows Mobile. But isn't that interesting that you didn't know that? And that Microsoft, for years, has been the most dominating company in computers and yet here they are potentially getting left out of the next wave of computing because they didn't see mobile as being where they need to go or they did but they weren't doing things that people liked like they just pretty much took windows and put a start button at the bottom of their screen and use the stylus they hit it really tiny originally i think their new product is great but have they missed that tipping point that they need to be at have they, have they worked with HTC? They have. They they well. What they originally started doing was charging for their operating system. Because I had, I think I had mine, and it was start. <laughs> that's, that's well, a lot of money. Yeah, it, it's one of those things that I don't think is garbage anymore. I think that they have a good. I think that what happened was their CEO is there now, who's trying to just be everywhere, and he wants Microsoft products on all devices. But is it too late? Are there already entrants that have come in? I mean, maybe Windows goes away. We don't really have Windows anymore but we use Office. Because I think Office, they're doing a pretty good resurgence. And that's just my opinion, I'm not, you know, I'm not. So what do you think they're giving 10 away? I think they're giving 10 away because they have to. Yeah, they need people to stay on the platform. And everybody else does it. Google gives away their operating system. Apple gives away their operating system. And what it does is it directly hurts their main sales driver. I mean, the thing that funds Microsoft is sales of Windows and sales of Office. You take away the two big money makers, and everything else they do don't really have the revenue that those two products have. So there's a resistance to change. There's a lot of money coming in currently from that, but are they trying to you know, milk that golden goose too far to the point that it's gonna kill itself in the future? That's, that's where the, the uh, questions have to come. And I think it's a great example of a company that is like, well, do we need to change or don't we need to change? We're in a really good financial position. A lot like BlackBerry. I think we talked about BlackBerry just re quickly. Um, I don't know if you guys know the story about BlackBerry on the day the iPhone came out, when they launched the iPhone and Steve Jobs presented it. It was not perfect by any means, but they got up and did a flawless demo of it on, on stage. They said they had six months till it shipped. And BlackBerry's board got together and they sat down with Research in Motion was the name of the thing. And they decided at the end of the day that Apple had faked the demo. 
that what they did was not possible. And they, and they literally, this group of smart people talked themselves into believing that it was fake because it was impossible to be done. That's how blind they were to dealing with the change, right? That they were that, you know, that blinded. In fact, when the first one came out and they got a cop, uh, when they got a hold of it, um, the COO, um, starts with now, I can't remember his last name right now, but he, he was an engineer by trade. He pulled it apart and he said, well, they built a mini computer and a phone. What, how is this even possible? And he was questioning it and everything to the point where does anybody even buy a Blackberry anymore? I mean, that was the number one smartphone six years ago. Seven, even five years ago was the number one smartphone. And interesting, another little tidbit of funny, con, uh, I guess, current events. Just yesterday on CNBC, one of the former heads of GM, who's a vice president of GM, he was on saying Apple supposedly is making a car and they're supposedly releasing it in, in 2019. And he said, oh, that's a giant money pit. Uh, you can't just walk into the auto industry and make a successful car. It takes years to figure that out, which is the exact quote, almost verbatim, that Palm said. You guys remember Palm? Like, we don't even have Palm anymore about Apple coming in and building a phone. They said, PC guys can't just walk in and do this. It's going to take them years to figure it out. And I think that history, as we study things, can... I mean, we can look at it and go, how many times do you have to be proven wrong? Or how many times do you have to pretend like you're blind to any company, whether it's Redbox, Netflix, Kodak and digital cameras, um, Apple and the iPhone coming in and Android sweeping Microsoft out. All these instances where we see people that are willingly being blind to change because it's uncomfortable for where they are and they don't think it's going to take off. And I believe that a lot of times they think they can exert so much control on what's happening that they prevent the change from happening. So it's a it's a big one. It's a big one. What do you think about? It? What were we gonna say there, Kevin? Looks like you got something else you want to talk about. Uh, is it like a vision? Not removing obstacles of the new vision or thing. Not planning short-term victories, and they claim victory too soon. Yeah. I mean, we can see that Blockbuster is just thinking, we have the victory, nobody else is going to come in. There's no other video stores. Um, <clears throat> Andrew's like, yeah, they were wrong. Didn't we all have, though, before, and this might be before your time, Andrea, we all had before Blockbuster, there was a local video store everywhere. You just had, like, Ted Nancy's Video Depot, and then all of a sudden Blockbuster would show up, and that place would go out of business because that place was, like, struggling to buy current releases and they'd have like two copies of the new movie and then Blockbuster would show up with a whole wall of that current release and everybody's like wow they got every copy we want and I think that Blockbuster missed that paradigm of I don't want to have to drive to go get a movie like can't we stream it or can't we or maybe I'm just going to be the grocery store really quick and swipe and I don't have to go through and do your checkout and have a card and there were so many barriers and I think that we have to look at that a lot of times is if we get wrapped up in what we're doing, we forget customer barriers. And anytime you can relieve or, or ease transition of someone, they're gonna go with the easy way. Uber is a great example. You guys looked at Uber? Anybody ever used Uber? So it's a taxi service. It, that's pretty much what it is, but it's not a taxi, it's people that drive around in their own cars and give people rides places. Better rates typically than a taxi. You can just call it on your smartphone. It gets assigned to a driver who accepts it and it comes over. They usually show up a lot faster. You're not having to dial 619-444-4444. Talk to some smoker lady on the other end of the line. I'll get you please. I can take you out there. <laughs> and then the cab shows up and it's nasty and you know, you're paying two bucks a mile or two bucks. Pretty yeah, and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking to you. I'm on the phone while I'm driving. You know, it's just all these things that are, it was ripe for, for disruption. And yet the taxi cab companies are like, why don't people like us? We're safe. We're this. We're like, you're a bunch of jerks. And you charge way too much for driving. 
Yeah, the meters just jump away. You're, you're sitting there watching it tick up, and you're like, wow, this is a really positive experience for the, for the passenger. I'm getting range anxiety as I drive around town. It, it's just one of those things that, you know, was ripe for, for disruption, and yet I'm sure there was somebody somewhere in the taxi industry that said, we should have an app that people could just call a taxi for really quick. And there are taxi apps, but that was just one little piece of it, and they almost think that, oh, if we can just compete with an app, then that's going to make it better. No, they want price, they want service, they want the ability to have a nicer car, or you can select the type of car you want to have. So it's it's an interesting uh, look at it. Sorry, Kevin, I don't mean to keep talking. Questions? You guys got any questions for Kevin? This is a good article. There's some. Um, yeah, I skipped some because I wanted to call like I forgot what's the thing if I uh, really take a picture that's in the article, whatever. Cut it and just paste it from the grab. Well, I call it grab, but um, um, screenshot. Yeah. yeah, screenshot. I forgot how to do it because I would put the arrows and the other graphs in it, but I forgot how to do it, so I just like skipped it. That's right. Well, so how would you, if you were in, let's just go back to Blockbuster because we all seem to smile and laugh at that one. How would you, if you were Blockbuster, try to convince Blockbuster, you're a person at Blockbuster, try to convince Blockbuster that they need to sell all their stores, lay off most of their employees, and start using kiosks in a streaming service. Are you going to have any resistance to that change? What do you think, Kevin? Uh, just put out all the facts and prove that if they don't change it right away, they're just going to die. Hopefully. You don't think there was someone in Blockbuster that said, we're going to die if we don't do this right away? Yeah. I guarantee there were people in Blockbuster saying that. What was preventing the change? Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah, well, changing, not knowing, yeah. jumping into the future. Wait, you're saying we're going to lay off all of our employees? I'm sure that was a popular decision with the head of retail. I'm sure that was not very popular with them. And what if all the employees started getting wind of it? That's not going to go over well. And wait, you're going to say all the computer nerds are taking over now? We do sales. You know, we're in video, we're in customer relations. Right. That's what we do is we bring service. But the prices couldn't sustain. Like seven bucks a video? Who was gonna pay seven bucks a video when he could pay a buck twenty-five for a DVD? Anyway, it's a it's a fascinating thing. Well I guess the would would it be the jobs just gonna shift it? Because I'm pretty sure that uh, like the red box has uh, I mean the only guy I've ever seen is the guy who goes there and like just checks on the kiosk. <laughs> but I mean they have to have a factory somewhere. Those 19-year-old uh, dropout college people that are working at Blockbuster, they're going to be the perfect ones for those kiosks. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Okay. Good job. Bravo.